Good morning, everyone. So I called my oldest daughter last night. She lives in the Seattle area. And the, the real purpose of that was to ask her what she pays for childcare, because I know she lives in an area that's really high. So I started asking her some questions. And she said, I know you speak on a lot of issues, but I never uh, knew that you uh, spoke on childcare issues and education issues. And I said, I never have before. <laughs> I said, but if you knew Ruth Schmidt like I know Ruth, and I've known her for about three and a half years, you don't say no. <laughs> so when Ruth asked me to do this, I was uh, happy to put a couple things together. Um, I would also say that of all the meetings that I've ever gone with Ruth, you always know that she's in the room because she's very passionate about her work and doesn't let a single meeting go by where she doesn't talk about her issue, even if it's not the main issue of the day. <laughs> She always makes sure that she gets that in, so uh, I always appreciate when someone is uh, passionate about what they do. So, yes, today is my last day of serving as mayor. I've been in local government for uh, over 40 years. My father passed away in October. He was 94, and uh, they have, my mom is still living, she just turned 92. They have 19 uh, grandchildren, 34 great-grandchildren, and one great-great-grandchild. And it was at my uh, father's funeral that I decided I'm going to give up something I love to something uh, to do something that I love even more. So I have five grandkids that are between four and a half and, and nearly two. And uh, I just want to spend more time with them. I think that's extremely important. So um, it's always dangerous when you start giving facts and figures when there's been other people before you. Uh, because the numbers and percentages don't always match up. But I would say, trust what Mark put together and trust what Ruth put together. Disregard what I'm saying when it comes to facts and figures. <laughs> so why is early child care and education critical for counties? I work for county government. Well, the answer is simple. Uh, strong early child care and education benefits everyone. Uh, children's, families, businesses, the public sector, uh, and ultimately the communities where we live and where we work. Strong, viable communities are much more desirable places when it comes to recruitment and retention. So we want vibrant, strong communities. Um, and stronger communities are also less dependent on government services and government dollars, which then frees up those dollars to do, to do other things, which are also very needy services. So while the answer to the problem is very simple, access to early child care and education is both challenging to find and under, un, uh, unaffordable for many. My daughter wasn't bragging when she told me this last night. She said, we can afford it, but for our four and a half and, and two year old, they pay $2,800 a month. That's a significant amount of money. She said, I don't know how, how some people do it. So it has been reported that, I know Ruth had some other numbers, uh, what I saw was that nearly 600 kids under the age of six in the state of Wisconsin potentially need um, uh, child care and education, and just slightly over 50% of that are the slots that are available. So there certainly is a demand for more. So why is there a lack of providers and, and a shortage of staff? We heard some of that this morning. I think a lot of it has to do with um, that while the job is fulfilling, a lot of people still think of it as daycare and babysitting rather than child care uh, education, even though it has been acknowledged for a long time that by the age of three, 80% of that child's brain has been developed. And I, I just can't believe uh, what I hear coming out of my grandkids' mouth and, and things that they're doing and saying. As an example, uh, we were doing FaceTime one night. My daughter said, Rachel, or said, Rowan, would you like to count to 10 for grandpa? So she counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then she looks up at me and she said, now do you want me to hear, hear me do it in Spanish? <laughs> Her mom had no idea that she even do it in Spanish. <laughs> so therefore, young children uh, who do not have access to quality child care education, they're at a distinct disadvantage to those that do. Um, another reason is compensation, and we heard about that uh, previously as well. So many of the positions in early child care pay the same as a lot of other uh, entry-level jobs uh, that only require perhaps a, a GED or a high school uh, diploma. So because of this, uh, providers are being forced to invest. And how many times did you hear invest today? 
I like that. We're talking about investing. We're not talking about, oh, this is just another expense. We're investing into the future. So those uh, providers are forced to train individuals to become qualified to work in the field. And then a lot of those employees go on to work for schools or, as Ruth mentioned, Quick Trip or other convenience stores or places like that because they can get higher benefits, even higher pay. So it's therefore, it's no surprise that in 2015 there was a report uh, done by the Center of Wisconsin Strategy that shows that nearly 49% of the people that work in child care uh, centers have less than two years of tenure. Less than two years of tenure. And so it really drops off at the beginning. The ones that stay, in my opinion, are not doing it for the money. They're doing it because it's, it's fulfilling for them and they really love what they're doing. So um, when we talk about that 49% having less than two years tenure, with the low unemployment rate that we currently have, Ruth mentioned 3%, if we had those numbers for 2018, my guess is that it's even higher than 49% with, with less than two years of tenure. The cost of early child care and education is another uh, concern for Wisconsin families. Certainly the cost of early child care depends on where you live. However, the fact remains that many of the families are still struggling not only to pay for their child care, but then also to meet the needs of all their other living expenses. Uh, this is something that I picked up and, and it just it amazed me. In a recent article that I read, it was reported that Wisconsin is one of 33 states where the annual cost of infant care is higher than what it would cost for tuition in any of our four-year universities. That just really stuck out for me. So then this uh, creates another dilemma for families. When families compare the cost of paying for child care to that of having parents stay at home um, with their children, many uh, choose to do the latter. I have my daughter-in-law stays home with their two children, and that's, that's fine as well. They can afford to do it. Some, some folks can. And there's some trade-offs, as we all know. If one of the parents or both of the parents, whatever, are staying home with the kids, there are short and long-term uh, implications of that as well. So uh, Mark talked a little bit about the demand for early child care and education services, and it's at an all-time high. Well, at the same time, Wisconsin's demographics are not doing us any favors. But we're going to have to deal with it. It is what it is. So baby boomers who currently make up the largest number of employees in the nation's uh, workforce, many of them have retired or, or will be retiring in the next couple years. In county government, our average age of our employee is over 45 years. And that's much more than what the private sector, from what I hear, for the most part. So at the same time, we have the millennials, which are now the largest percentage of the population in our country. They're beginning to have families. So this creates a perfect storm where employers need more employees and families need more access to quality care and education. Uh, again, this is a major concern for counties. Um, and what we do in government, not just counties, but cities and villages and, and towns, is we provide different types of services. And many of the services that we provide cannot be provided with flexible schedules uh, by or telecommuters um, and so forth, or using technology. We need to be at our nursing homes 24-7. We need to be at our sheriff's departments 24-7. We have other employees that are on call, and as soon as they, their pager goes off, they need to go immediately. So we don't have quite that flexibility that other employers have. We do in some cases, and we're working very hard on that. So many of the services that the public requires, they need to meet face-to-face -face with county employees. And we cannot, county government or government in general, we cannot function responsibly without access to employees. And counties are already struggling. Uh, Mark mentioned it's not just recently. This has been going on for quite some time that we're seeing a, um, a struggle to find employees. Not only are they taking the employment and working for a little while, I hear a lot of employers say that we're offering people jobs and they never even show up for the job the first day. So we've got, a, we've got a severe problem. Now, I talked about some negative things. I don't want to be just negative, so let's talk a little bit about the positive things, okay? On a positive note, we should be reminded and we should educate others that child care uh, is a significant economic driver to the state of Wisconsin. 
So when we take a look at the number of people that are employed in early child care, um, not only do, do those providers employ the staff and then they pay taxes, they perhaps buy or rent a home, uh, they spend money in their communities, but the providers also purchase goods and services from other businesses that directly um, benefit our economy. So we need to talk about that. We talk a lot about, for economy, we talk about broadband. We talk about uh, the availability of the appropriate utilities. We talk about transportation. We talk about workforce, but very seldom do we hear about childcare. So we need to remind people about that. Finding a solution to the access of affordable and high quality uh, child care is necessary. This is a statewide problem that needs a statewide solution. This is not um, just in Dane County, it's not just in urban areas, it's uh, not just in rural areas, it is all over the state that we're seeing this problem. So it will require the state of Wisconsin, uh, local government, schools, the private sector and everyone to work together. Uh, investing in this effort will reap many re rewards. Not investing in this effort would be a major mistake. So uh, one suggestion that I have a recommendation, and, and again it's uh, some of the other efforts that Ruth and I and others are working on, is that in order to get things done it's really difficult to do it alone. So we really need to build coalitions of like-minded people and that's what we need to do in this effort to increase funding and awareness of the challenges that we have in this area. So talk to people, work with people, convince people that this is the right thing to do. Um, and that's how we're going to get things done. <laughs>